facing Rafael Soriano. Sweeney coming in with a 360 batting average, second in the AL. Oh, that'll help it. Raising his average to 362. Sweeney, though, still second to this man. Ichiro facing yes. Paul Bird, leading the AL in four offensive categories, and this is how he gets many of his hits with his speed. Ichiro's average up to 366. Go, Bobblehead, you go. Ichiro facing Bird with two on Ichiro, the intentional walk. They'd rather load the bases than pitch to him. What about Sweeney? He gets nothing to hit. He gets the walk. No change in the average for Sweeney. Fourth inning, two men on. Sweeney facing John Halama, full count. And again, Sweeney gets nothing to hit. And why would he? Second walk of the day for Sweeney. No change in his average, hitting 362. Ichiro's turn against Bird. Ichiro, bat on the ball. Uh, he can't beat out everything that hits on the ground. That drops his average to 365. Still leads in the AL. Sweeney now facing Halama, and Sweeney finally gets something he can put a bat on. Opposite way, grounder. That drops Sweeney's average to 361. Sixth inning, two on, M's down three. Perfect spot for Mike Cameron against Bird. Mike Cameron, he's built for this. A three-run homer, ties the game. It was his only hit of the game, but it ties the game at five. Ninth inning now. Why would you pitch to Sweeney? The only guy in the Royals hit, hit lineup hitting over 300. I said, Sasaki, why would you pitch to him? Lou, listen. why would you pitch they to him? Listen. listen to Linda Cohn, people. Thank you. Royals win. Seven to five, stunning the Mariners. Kansas City. For the Twins and the hits just keep on coming. Matt LaCroix, blast off Zito, two-run variety. His third of the year, and right off the bat, Twinkies up to love. Bottom four, A still down. Eric Chavez, not the 30th American League All-Star. And this didn't help him get over the sadness. 6-4-3, but Terrence Long does score as the lead is cut in half. Top five, Twins with one on. LaCroix, into the gap. Christian Guzman will score. LaCroix's solid day continues. Get a good look at Mr. LaCroix, I believe. There he is. That's what he looks like. Good. He's two for four, three RBM. Bottom five, out of pot, hot shot, Corey Koski, diving stab. That's a web gem on another show. On here, it's just a good play. Bottom nine, Chavez says, okay, no all-star. How about some of this? Takes Eddie Guardado into the gap. Twins have uh, won three in a row on the road. They have not won four in a row on the road all year, but it's everyday Eddie. Could he close it out? And a word, no. That's it. That's all. Almedo signs. Pinch hitting. And that ends the ball game. Almedo signs with the second pinch hit game ending homer of the year for the A's. Signs has three of those in his career. All star Eddie Guardado, his first blown save in 12 chances. Barry Zito pitches much better than he has against the Twins. No decision, but Oakland still 17 and 1 in his last 18 home starts. Baltimore Orioles and the Angels. Top four, Gary Matthews Jr. Facing Ramon Artiste, Adam Kennedy from his knees. Gets the out. Excellent play. Later in the inning, bases empty for Jay Givens. And Ramon Ortiz, who was 4-0 in his last five starts, treated rudely here by Givens, and Givens wasn't done. He has 13 home runs at this juncture. Bottom four, two men on for Kennedy facing Rodrigo Lopez. Lopez 5-0 this year at night. Strikes out Tim Salmon in the bottom of the seventh. Lopez shutting down the best hitting team in Major League Baseball. Speaking of Major League Baseball, this, folks, is a record. The 58th home run of the day. Gibbons 14th of the year, and that is a Major League record, which, as I mentioned, was added to as we went on. 62 in all. Back to the future. Dimitri Young. Looks like Poet from Oz. Number six on the season. He can swing a bat. Later, in the first, Robert Fick. His 11th of the season. Second in the ball game. Record-setting home run night. This game helped out. Kenny Lofton, for the 21st time in his career, leadoff homer. It's his fourth of this year. Two batters later, Maglio Ordonez. His 14th. The hits just keep on coming in the second. Jose Valentin, his 11th. Ties the ball game. Bottom four, Sandy Alomar. He cranks it. Bottom six, Alomar not done. Four for five on the night. Two home runs in the game. This is the second. Top seven. It's Rock'em Sock'em Robots. George Lombard to center field. That's gone. Check the baseballs. Maglio Ordonez. Get up, Bivol! That is.
is a massive grand slam, his second. That thing's out in Skokie. Wendell McGee, number six. It's 17 to six, home team. Later, top nine, Damian Easley. That's gone. Next batter, poet from Oz, Dimitri. Again! Again! 12 home runs, the same two teams who did it before do it again. They tie their own major league record. Unbelievable stuff. In the On the Braves, first batter was Rafael for a call, 93 mile per hour heat. That's a cold strike. Uh, let's go with the heat inside again, 93 mile per hour. That's ball one. All right, let's pick it up a notch, 94 mile per hour inside. That's one, two count. 96 mile per hour, I'm thinking heat away. Oh, opposite way, but it's just fouled by for call. So he stays in there battling 94 mile per hour heat, fouled off by Fercal, still battling against Bartolo Colon. We're talking 98 miles per hour, that's another foul ball. Catcher Michael Barrett puts down the sign, let's try breaking pitch, breaking pitch. 84 miles per hour, grounded inside the bag at first, and Fercal would turn it on. He sees the opening and will have a stand-up triple. Good battle by Fercal against Bartolo Colon. Next batter, the ageless wonder, Julio Franco. Franco looking for space opposite way. Uh-oh, Vlad Guerrero must have been reading ESP in the magazine. Loses it. Ball goes to the wall for Colin. Score sack fly E9. Franco moves to third. It's 1-0 Atlanta against Colon. Now facing Gary Sheffield. That's a grounder. Now Franco would score on that. Orlando Cabrera, uh-oh. That's too high. Expos committing two errors in the first behind Cologne. Can I go back to the American League? Oh, just kidding. Cologne to Chipper Jones. Here was an improvement. A 4-6-3 double play. Defense redeeming itself for Bartolo. Expos down just 2-1 in the sixth. Fernando Tatis with a bags full. His sixth career grand slam. He's hitting 385 with the bases loaded in his career. 5-2 Expos back to Cologne. And he had it going on. Ask Chipper. At the knees. Heat. Strike three called. Then the breaking stuff to Darren Bragg, the pinch hitter. Six Ks for Cologne. He held the Braves scoreless in the final six innings. Cologne, seven innings, two runs allowed, one earned run, and the Expos win. Sending the Braves to just their second loss in 13 games. At the same time, they pull within eight and a half games of Atlanta in the NL East. Cologne, who should be allowed to pitch in the All-Star game, no matter which side he pitches on. Now 13 and two lifetime against NL clubs. Four and zero this season. And by the way, Andrew Jones, an all-star for the second straight year. Fans voting him the 30th man on the NL team. Lance Bergman's an all-star. He's also the king of Synergy Field. We flash back to April 16th. One, two, and three the hard way. Three homers in his first three at-bats. He has four homers so far at Synergy. Actually, we're going to have to check that after the first pitch from Joey Hamilton. Come fly with me. Fly! That ball is smoked, but it wasn't the farthest shot we saw to right. 26th of the year for Berkman. Next at bat, top three. First pitch from Joey Hamilton. This one goes to left center. This is a three run variety. His 27th of the season, tied with Sammy for the major league lead. Now, you want to see a you want to see a bomb? I am William Wallace. Actually, that's I am Adam Dunn. We have a stoplight situation out there. Red, yellow, green. It's off the red. 421 feet for Dunn, his 16th, 5 2 strokes. Top five, Berkman, his third at bat. Bruce Chen wants nothing to do with him. Walks bottom six now, 5 4 Astros, runner on third. Wilton Guerrero with a squeeze off Pedro Bourbon. Barry Larkin comes in, touches the dish. Larkin, incidentally, 3 for 5 in the game. He pitched in well. We're tied at five. Bottom 10 after a sack fly gave the Strohs the lead. Jason LaRue goes 6 4 3. That adds up to 13, which really means nothing, but it ended the game. Billy Wagner with a save. The Lance Berkman show continues. Nine for 17 with six homers and 14 RBI at Synergy. Berkman's homered in four of five. He leads the major leagues with 74 ribbies. Top three in the order for the Strohs, Vizcaino, Biggio, and Berkman. Seven of the team's ten hits. The Reds. Last year, September 3rd, 2001, Smith hurling a no-hitter against the Padres on the road. He sure remembers it. Everybody was talking about Bud in St. Louis. Top of the first, no score. Back to now, facing Ron Gant. Let him celebrate a little bit longer. And why not? Yeah. 
Gant. Up the middle with two out RBI single. Padres up one nothing. Fans still supporting Bud Smith wearing his number 52 jersey. Bottom two, Kevin Jarvis. Placido Polanco. Are you kidding me? Putting the cards up four to one. Polanco's fifth of the year. Next batter, Jim Edmonds. Are we talking back-to-back -back home runs? Are we? Yeah. Tonight we are. Yes, we are. Edmonds 16th home run of the year. And your very next batter, Albert Poolhose. Could we have back to back up to back home runs? It's Tuesday, July the 2nd. Yes, we can. All right, then. For the first time in two years, back to back to back home runs on the Cardinals. Poolhose is 18. Here's a pitch to Polanco. Right down the middle and then down the pipe to Edmonds, and it was the meatball <laughs> to pool holes. And there you are. They can talk about their homers and how happy they are. Cards up by three bags full. Tino Martinez. Tino clears the bases. A three RBI triple. Fernando Vina, Polanco, and pool holes would score. Cards have no trouble over the Padres. St. Louis now 23 and 3 against the Padres over the last three seasons. Placido Polanco, he now has four homers in his last 37 at bats and the sweat meter is on. Mike Piazza, it's getting hot in here. Ground rule double, Roberto Alomar scores. Piazza playing his hometown, two for four, he's hitting 279. One nothing Mets. What about our friend Mr. Adams beginning to sweat this one out as the sweat meter rises? That was a little Nelly for the people, wasn't it? Thing, yes, it was. Larry Bow. I didn't say his next line. Mets would play yeah. three in the first. We'd prefer these guys keep their clothes That's on. That's right, Alomar, <laughs> opposite way, double the gap, is only hitting the game. Pedro Estacio would score from first. Mets would be up four to two. What about Adams on the mound? He'd be working so hard that uh, we put an arrow on the drop of sweat that falls from his cap. We don't miss a beat here on Sports Center. The hat is completely soaked. There's going to be some sweat dripping. <laughs> Burnett's. Two of the Mets, 12 hits. Uh -oh. I'm not sure what that was by Bobby Abreu as he misplays it. Edgardo Alfonso would score the Mets cruising over the Phillies. Adams maxing out the meter. Five innings, six earned runs, eight hits. An easy Met victory. Down in Texas, Rafi Palmero looking for his 18th. Bye. This ball is yoked. Solo homer, these streaky Rangers. They won eight in a row. Then they lost four in a row. They win this one. Gabe Kapler on the DL doing a little play-by-play. -play. Homers and runs scored. Jim Toman. Homers in his sixth straight game. The first Indian ever to do that. 16th to do it in the majors. 3-0 Indians off of Clemens. Ricky Gutierrez off Gutierrez. Opposite way, fly. Mondesi starts in. Oh, but retreats to make a nice catch. Check it out again. Perhaps some early Yankee jitters. But the Yankees did get him for his defense. Bottom second. Mondesi, his first plate appearance. I hear some cheers. Ryan Dries walking him on five pitches. Next batter, Robin Ventura, the all-star. Mondesi, Travis deals second. Einar Diaz gets him. Bottom four. Yanks still down three to nothing. Mondesi up with two on, and he gets hit in the arm. Mondesi would eventually score in a sack fly to tie up this game at three. Same score in the sixth. Matt Lawton up. Lawton off of Ramiro Mendoza. And Mondesi plays this perfectly off the wall, and Raul holds Lawton to just a single. Bottom six, still tied. Mondesi's third at bat. The grounder, the third, Travis Fryman. Uh-oh, it's seventh error of the year for Fryman. Mondesi reaches base for the third time. Yanks up two, Mondesi up. One on first and third, opposite way. Looking for space, finds it. Derek Jeter would score. Mondesi with his first Yankee hit in RBI. Two batters later, Jorge Posada with a base is loaded. He's fourth career grand slam. That's seven grand slam homers in the last two seasons for the all-star catcher. The Yankees win 10. To five. Matt Lawton did have a leadoff homer, just the fourth ever allowed by Roger Clemens. On the field, triple digits. It was hot. Chris Carpenter pitching. Bases loaded. Shea Hillenbrand, a fly ball to Jose Cruz Jr. He says, I'm in right, and I can throw like the fellow that used to be out here. Double play. Jose Offerman gets gunned at the dish. Bottom second. Trot Nixon up there. Rips one to deep center field. And this, by Vernon Wells, is a phenomenal, phenomenal play. Great grab. Tim Wakefield, he was on the hill, starting. Brady Little, the manager. Your thoughts? I think what, what Tim Wakefield did out there today for our ball club was more than we could ask. And, and uh, to ask him to do more than that would have been unfair to him. He battled the elements pretty good out there today, and, and he, he pitched a very good ball game.
So hot guys were changing their uniforms, and as soon as they changed one and put on another one, it was wet. Willie Banks into pitch. Carlos Delgado, shallow fly. Manny Ramirez coming on in. Yolatenga! I got it. Yes, he does. Bottom seven, Red Sox trail. One nothing. Scott Cassidy to Lou Merloni. Merloni this time Burns Cruz Jr. who was playing in at Little League distance for crying out loud. Two runs come in to score. Merloni gets a triple. Give you another look at this one. You'll see that Cruz Jr. was uh, well he wasn't in the infield but he was pretty shallow for a major leaguer. Merloni, Merloni gets it over his head. Sox win it two to one and Merloni has a message for the hometown team. You remember? Remember Ben Affleck kind of ripped him, but maybe he's eating his words now. Lou Merloni can hit. This is nice. We'll take it. And don't forget, Johnny Damon, MLB.com. You got a couple hours, so get out there. Let's go. The message would be would be heard. Tim Wakefield awfully stout in his first start since April 14th. Six innings pitch, no runs, no walks, which is his chances of being voted in as the 30th American League All-Star. Hopefully we get to see how um, strong um, Red Sox Nation is, um, and, um, you know, it, it's going to be fun. Hopefully um, I get that vote out, definitely cherish it, and I, I know I'm up against stiff competition. Um, Jim Tomey is definitely a crowd a favorite, and he's got the Tribe Nation going. We flash back to earlier in the segment, Damon's competition, Jim Tomey just absolutely smokes this ball. Worth a second look, upper deck Yankee Stadium off the rocket. Back to this game, Johnny Damon on second. First game. On Brian Dawback, who was in just a horrific slump, but busted it out of it in this game. We'll tell you about that in just a second. That's a double down the right field line. Damon scores easily. Red Sox won nothing, and they would score three in the first frame. Still three nothing in the fifth, and Damon walks on four pitches, and clearly a four pitch walk was the key because while Damon's on first, he gets the news via the scoreboard in Fenway. Moonlight Graham. He is the all star. Crowd salutes him. Well earned. Top seven. Blue Jays down 6 3. Bases loaded. Dangerous man at the plate. Carlos Delgado. But he's out on the front foot. Flies out to end the threat. Jays still down three through seven innings. Top nine. Alan Embry. Into the game to face Delgado. We flash back to game one. Embry struck out Delgado in the ninth for the second out. Same two men, only now it's nighttime, and it's a different game, but it's the exact same result. Lights out, ball game. Embry saves both games, strikes out Delgado both times in the ninth. The Sox sweep. Skipper Grady Little called it, quote, a pretty effective day. Showcase highlight. Paul Laduca, not an all-star. He says, oh, really? Yeah. Ask Rick Helling. He was miffed, said he was going to take it out on the D-backs. His fifth home run, it's 1-0 L.A. Helling. He's never beaten the Dodgers in his career. We moved out of the sixth because, frankly, Omar Dahl and Rick Helling were dealing and nothing much happened until this. Brian Jordan, a double with two on and two out. That's fairly pedestrian stuff. See it all the time. Dave Roberts comes in. Then when Eric Carros heads to the dish, things get interesting. The ball gets away from Damian Miller. Now Miller will throw it back to Rick Helling. Now Helling and Brian Jordan, both former football players, and we've got a pile up. Jordan tumbles over Helling. Helling looks up, gets up like he's kind of mad. It's 4 nothing Dodgers. Watch it again. It's a little leapfrog situation. Jordan touches the dish, and the ankle of Helling gets rolled in the process. Next batter, Helling hits Adrian Beltate square in the back. And Beltre, he is angry. He's going to charge until he realizes that Helling's got a bad wheel. Helling says, dude, charge me if you want. I got a problem. He is down on the ground hurt. Both the benches come out, and then they realize what's going on, and it wasn't intentional. Helling has a problem with the ankle. Helling, I should point out, played football, but was a punter. Jordan's always going to win that one. Top nine, seven nothing Dodgers. Eric Karros, he is gone and adds to a major league record of home runs ever hit in one day. We're going to talk a lot about that. The Dodgers with their second straight. and now Superman, since moving to the three spot in the lineup, take a look. Kent, hey, not bad, Jeff. Flashy graph. That's attractive. 13 for 24 with three homers and 15 RBI in five games in the three hole. Some outfit. Top of the first, one on, one out. Kent against Denny Nagel. Kent finds some space with a single as hot streak continues. Next batter, Barry Bonds, who hasn't homered in six straight games. Seven home runs, lifetime against Denny Nagel, but he'll take the blue double, which falls just out of the reach of Todd Hollinsworth. That scores Rich Aurelia. It's 1 0 San Francisco. Still top one, bases loaded, two out. Nagel, still there, facing Damon Miner. Miner. Broken bat, another. 
Oh, good play. Diving in safely to first. Clayton Kent, 2 nothing Giants. Next batter, Giants looking to pour it on. And who to do that? None other than Shinjo. Not scared of heights. A grand slam home run. He's sixth of the year. It's 6 nothing Giants. And Denny Nagel is getting shelled at Coors. Two batters later, one on, two out. Nagel facing David Bell. Bell. He's been lifting his 13th home run of the year. Part of an eight-run first for San Francisco. Nagel allowing 10 hits, 10 runs, and just two innings of work. To the second we go. It's 8-1, one, one on, one out against Miner. And that is Damon Miner's seventh home run of the year. First of two homers for him on the night, 10 to 1. Giants. It was 12-3 Giants in the sixth. Nobody on, two outs. Shinjo. Five for six, five RBIs, his second home run on the night, seventh on the year, 13 to three. Nobody on, two outs, same score, Kent. Into the corner, this goes, will be a ground rule double, two more hits from the three hole for Super Kent. <laughs> Next batter, Barry Bonds, remember him, the mere mortal. That homerless streak, now it's seven straight games. But he was two for four with two RBI, and he just wants to win. He'll tell you so himself. That scores Kent, 14-3 Giants. It was 17-5 in the ninth when Rick White faces Reggie Sanders and Sanders. No doubt. Opposite weight power. Second of the night for Sanders, 10th on the year. Three Giants with two homer nights as they win it. 18-5. Well, where do you start with this one? 23 hits for the Giants. How about that? Every to columnist Rick Riley. That's what Sammy Sosa said to him after Riley challenged the Cubs slugger to go to a local clinic and be tested for steroid use. The verbal conflict taking place last Thursday. Well, Tuesday, Sosa once again telling reporters he's not a steroid user and is tired of being the target. I always take care of the media, everybody, and assuming that I, you know, should have been taking care of a lot of respect. And, um, uh, it's, it's something that I really um, am not supposed to be happy because everybody knows that I'm really just want to be in play baseball. And Sammy and the Cubs taking on Florida. July 2nd, a special day for Sammy Sosa. Let's flash back. 1993, July 2nd, Sosa. Six for six in a nine-inning game against Colorado at Mile High Stadium. That's pre Coors Field. Check out the change in batting stances over the years. 2002 to the left, Sosa more upright. 93 to the right, Sosa bent over, the bat over his head, and a bit scared. Top five, five, two Marlins, one on Sosa. Sosa off of Brad Penny. A two-run homer, a major league leading 28th of the year, 5-4 Marlins. Cubs pitcher John Lieber, problems pitching at night this year. Lieber 6-1 with a 2.53 ERA this season when pitching during the day, but at night 0-3 with a 4.39 ERA. Bottom five tied at five. Lieber against Cliff Floyd. Lights out. A solo home run for Floyd, one of his three hits. 6-5 Marlins, number 18 for Floyd. Lieber allows six runs in five innings. 9-7 Marlins in the ninth, two on. Bill Miller, Vladimir Nunez, the bouncer. Derek Lee flips to Nunez, covering first. End of game, Marlins win. Hey, I'll tell you, the three more hits for Cliff Floyd. I don't think he wants the Marlins to trade him. He's hitting seven of his last eight games, batting 343 with four homers and 10 RBI during that span. Lieber suffers his first loss since the 29th of May. Tom Gordon with his first appearance since September 5th. He struck out two in a scoreless eighth, notching the 1500th strikeout of his career. Milwaukee's pitcher Ruben Cavedo must not like the look of zero in the RBI column. He comes out swinging, bases loaded, top one. He slices one down the right field line. Alex Ochoa, Jose Hernandez come in to score. Jimmy Anderson from Pittsburgh does not make it out of the first inning. Cavedo intent on adding to the total and make it three. Brewers were two and 12 at PNC Park before this game. They're not three and 12. They match a season high with 12 runs thanks to Cavedo. We encourage you to start grilling meat early. Kick off.